Hi everyone, today we have a video of an iPad Pro 9.7 inch 2016. The problem being that it's not charging. A customer described that the problem occurred after they used a cheap or a copy charger or a copy cable, they're not entirely sure. Okay, the board doesn't take any power whatsoever. We've already tried, we've already tested the charging port, it's absolutely fine. The ammeter stays stuck at zero amps so it doesn't draw any power whatsoever. When it's inside the housing with the battery connected, the iPad stays stuck at 1%, but the ammeter is still the same, stays at zero. So based on what the customer said and based on other boards that we fixed here before, we're going to replace the charging IC, and then we're going to run another test with the ammeter and see if the problem solves itself. If not, we're going to go and investigate further and see if maybe if we have a faulty cap or a, or a different faulty component on the board. Okay, so now that we have the board under the microscope, we'll, uh, we'll see where the charging IC is located, which is here, just above the uh, LCD connectors. So the easiest way to do it is basically, if you don't want to use a board holder, just move it outside of your working desk so that the board has nothing underneath it to absorb the heat. And then it's the usual steps with the flux and the hot air. And we're going to remove it. For this I'm going to use the usual 365 degrees with 100 airflow on my quick um, 861DA. And we're going to see if this is enough because usually iPads tend to uh, take more heat in order to remove components. So we'll see if we need to increase the air, either the airflow or the temperature. <coughs> so that looks like it's not enough. I'm going to increase the airflow to 120, actually 130. It came off pretty easy. I'm not going to wick those pads, I'm simply going to just uh, run the soldering iron on top of them with new solder just to clean them and tin them at the same time. Like so. Okay. And now I'm just going to take a new IC. I'm going to solder it on the board. I don't expect this to be a very long video by any means. I just wanted to um, show you that it is doable and that the logic and the thinking of behind it is pretty much the same as any other iPhone that you would have to fix for these sort of problems. <clears throat> as usual, I'm putting the chip slightly off so that I see it moving into place. Uh, 
and that's pretty much it. Now we're just going to wait for the board to cool down a little bit. You can always use the, the fume extractor to cool down the board. is cooled out enough. And what do you know? Now we have power draw. Okay, let me show you on the camera as well. Okay, so now you have the ammeter there. We have the board with the chip replaced. We're simply going to plug it in. And you can see the result for yourself. Now it's drawing power, which means my suspicions were true in terms of the problem itself. Like I said, based on what the customer told us and previous experience with other iPads, with other iPhones, we sort of came to the conclusion that the problem will be the charging IC. We don't like to use fancy uh, TriStar testers. We've seen them fail a couple of times where boards were sent over to us previously being tested with, those sort of, with that sort of equipment. Sometimes if the charging port is faulty, the TriStar cannot be tested or we've had situations where Somebody already replaced the charging port and they were continuously trying to test it with TriStar testers and it was failing over and over and over again and they assumed it was the TriStar when in fact it was just the charging port. So uh, that being said I'm just going to put the iPad back together and um, I'll show you pictures with the uh, iPad actually charging. I've been Michael from MyTech Repairs. Thank you very much for watching. Like if you like this video, dislike if you didn't like it and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.